Hi everyone, thanks for being here and listening to this uh, short presentation of our project. I am Regis Catino, I have a PhD in philosophy and epistemology of social sciences, and my today's expertise is about the different aspects of game philosophy, game design and serious games. Today I will make a presentation about a research project that we started last year, 2020, and that we will continue until the end of this academic year. This project focuses on the study of fun and learning. More precisely, what we hope to accomplish is an experimental research on the so-called balance of fun and learning in serious games. That is to say, when we are playing games, is there a continuity or trade-off between fun and learning? Or if we insist on the educational aspects of the games, are we necessarily losing fun? And as you can see, the game we choose to study for this uh, specific aspect of games is a collaborative game called Anabi. So as you can see on the first slide of the presentation, this study will be conducted jointly by three organizations. There is uh, Les Ateliers Ludosophiques, which is a non-profit organization, which in its research section focuses on the interactions between games and philosophy, or more broadly, games and educational uses of games. Then there is uh, La Filière Jeux Vidéo, uh, the video game sections of the University Paul Valéry de Montpellier, represented by Florian Cossard. And the Game Lab, which is a game center in Set City, which is interested in the study of the relations between games and skills, represented by uh, Robin Lamarche Perrin, researcher at the CNRS. And we would like also to thank uh, Asmode Research and his Gaming Lab project who funded this uh, study. So, when we started our study, we wanted to learn more about serious game, or more precisely, serious gaming, which is the art of using games made for commercial uses in a pedagogical context for learning objectives. We wanted to know more about the effect of hijacking games, détourné, mainly in the relation to education or for critical perspectives. So we started our study with the idea, or rather the belief, that games are made for learning, that they are really good tools to learn new things, skills or knowledge. But what we realized in the literature we uh, started to uncover, uh, which is mainly a literature focused on the video games and not board games, is that there is an assumption in games, and more precisely in learning games, that there is a balance between fun and learning, and a negative uh, correlation between the two. So the funnier the game is, the less likely it is to convey knowledge or educational content, because players would forget themselves in the game. Conversely, when we try to inject more and more knowledge into a game, the less fun the game would be to play. Of course, this is not an assumption shared by everyone. Other studies insist on the intrication of fun and learning, like Raf Costa, who has a very strong statement about this relation, when he says in his book uh, Theory of Fun that basically all games are edutainment, or also Chris Crawford, who says that fun is just another word for learning. So all these reactions gave us the idea to take a closer look at this balance, this uh, opposition or this, the interactions between fun and learning. And uh, we decided to focus on a very precise and uh, representative aspect of the question. So we selected one dimension of knowledge that is particularly present in social board games, which is the ability to make inferences about other players. And we focus our uh, attention on one critical element of fun in the context of games, which is immersion. And then we selected a game where we could study this relation between immersion and the ability to make inferences. And we found that Anabi was the perfect game for this study. But I'll explain later in more details why uh, this game is well suited for uh, what we want to do. What you have here is a rough outline about the way we intend to carry out this study. So we selected a game that displays in an obvious way, that is to say, not too difficult to observe, these two aspects that we want to confront in games, the fun part and the learning part. Then uh, we 
want to take existing measurement scales, easy to manipulate to know how we can define and measure the feeling of fun on the one hand and the player's ability to learn something on the other. In our case, this ability is a skill. The ability to make inferences about other players' action during the game. When this experimental framework will be set up, we will then apply a series of controlled modifications that we've called modding. So we, we will apply a series of modifications to the games uh, and the context of the games, and we will try to analyze how this uh, will affect the feeling of fun or the ability to learn for players. I will later explain in more details the way we will approach these concepts of fun and uh, learning and how we intend to measure it. But let me first say a few words about the game we selected. So here is Anabi. All board game lovers should already know this very fun and elegant game. Anabi is a cooperative game. And in this game, um, the way it works is that all the players receive five cards, but they're not allowed to see it. Each card has a color and a number, and the players have to play their card one at a time to compose a firework columns sorted by colors and numbers. So the interesting thing about this game is that the players do not see their own cards, but only the ones of their teammates. So they need to give them advice for them to know what card they should actually play. But this int can only be about the color or about the value of the card. And from this limited information, the players must deduce what card they should play. So this game is very interesting because it has a different suitable characteristic for experimental study. First, the rules are really simple and easy to learn. Then the games are relatively short, about 20 minutes. And the players can make many rounds to improve their score. But uh, because of the current situation and in addition to uh, using a physical version of Anabi for live game sessions, we plan to build a, a digital version, either with Anabi Live or uh, Anabi.cards. Uh, this software can host online sessions of the game and by adjusting the source code, we will be able to tweak game parameters to make it uh, eventually simpler or to monitor particular game configurations that prove to be interesting for the study of inference ability. Now, one question that puzzled us is how do we measure fun in the context of this game and more generally in board games? The first observation that we can draw is that it is extremely hard to adequately describe and measure fun in gaming experience. Because my idea of what fun is in a game may not be your idea of fun. If you remember, for instance, uh, Richard Battle's categorization of playstyles, depending on your game psychological profile, you won't like the same things that the ones of another game profile. Another problem arose when we uh, look at the theories of fun in its relation with learning. Because there are some people like uh, Raf Koster who assume that fun is just another word for learning and so that it is only when we learn something from a game that we experience fun. But other researchers or game designers like uh, Nicole Lazaro thinks that uh, learning is an element that is not necessarily present in games. In one of her studies, she distinguishes four fun keys aspects of games, among which only one, that she calls the serious fun, is attached to learning. In her view, learning is only present in games when players explicitly use the game to develop their skills or their knowledge. Aware of these difficulties, we decided to uh, take the easiest solution, which is look at what other people do. And uh, what we discovered in uh, the literature is that there is a concept which uh, often emerges behind the notion of fun. And this concept is called uh, flow or immersion. And what we found is uh, an article very interesting, but I'm sorry I won't be able to pronounce the name of the, the researcher who wrote it. Um, and this guy developed a very interesting study in which he analyzes what makes experiences enjoyable to people. And he discovered that central to all of the experiences that he ran uh, 
was a psychological state that he called flow, which is an optim optimal state of enjoyment where people are completely absorbed in the activity. Other researchers like uh, Sweatster and Weiss use uh, the very close concept of immersion in their game flow model to denote the deep but effortless involvement, reduced concern for self and sense of time. So this is uh, the characteristic for the flow experience. There are many other studies in the gaming domain that uses this concept of immersion in order to study the level of fun in games, where immersion is used to refer to the degree of involvement and engagement players experience with a game. So overall, this uh, finding suggests that uh, immersion can be a very interesting candidate when we want to measure fun. I won't go any further in this direction because uh, we don't know yet which tools uh, we want to use in our study. But let's just say that there are many ways to measure immersion subjectively through questionnaires like the Game Experience Questionnaire or uh, objectively like uh, task completion, eye movements or something like that I found a, a little bit more odd in one of the studies we found is uh, how player respond when the experimenter bothers him when he or she is playing. So now let's turn to uh, the question of learning and inference. So among all the possible learning outcomes that we can study in board games, we want to emphasize an important distinction between explicit knowledge and tacit knowledge. On one hand, games can make possible the acquisition of some facts, like for example with a timeline, I can learn that toothbrush uh, were invented in um, 1850. But on another hand, can, games can also enable the acquisition of skills that are not limited to such explicit facts. For example, in a cooperative game, I can improve my communication skills. So board games offer uh, the possibility to learn by doing. And as such, they are excellent tools for uh, such knowledge that cannot be easily made explicit. One of the skills that is particularly interesting to study, especially in games like Anabi, is uh, the ability to make inferences. First, uh, logical inference is uh, the, the ability to derive useful conclusions from the mere observation of the game. Going beyond uh, immediate information to take actions, as for example in a game of chess, being able to plan out uh, moves ahead of time. But more interestingly, social inference, which is the ability to derive such conclusion from hypotheses about uh, the mental states of other players. For example, being able to act by guessing the future actions of other players based on what would be their own reasoning. This ability to attribute knowledge and intent to other players is also called in uh, psychology having a theory of mind. And this is something that is uh, at the core of uh, Anabi's game mechanisms. Now, how can we measure inference? Social inference is uh, present everywhere in Anabi. It can be very basic or it can require multiple steps of reasoning. That is why we distinguish different uh, levels of inference that we want to study. The first level of uh, inference implies taking into account some information that a partner would need in order to play a given card. The second level implies interpreting information given by a partner according to some hidden intentions. The third level implies interpreting an action taken by a partner that is not understandable given current information but which might be if we assume some new information that we are not aware of. And higher levels could then result from the establishment of more general game conventions between players, either explicitly before the game starts or implicitly by expecting some particular social behaviors. For each of these levels, we plan then to define archetypal game configurations. Every time such a configuration arises, we will uh, register the response of players to evaluate if they make uh, the correct assumption from what they know 
or on the contrary, if they failed at inferring what could have been. Such uh, archetypal configurations will then give us a formal way to measure inference abilities at various levels. So let us turn now on the research perspectives. So we still have to improve and refine our uh, experimental framework. This will be the work for the next uh, three months. And then the actual experiments will be carried out from uh, April to July uh, later this year. But what are we hoping to find? With this study, we hope to demonstrate that fun and learning are not competing against uh, each other, but that they are completing one another. That is to say, in the context of our experimental study, that the immersion in the game is positively related to the way players improve their inference ability. But what I forgot to mention until now is that uh, this project is only one brick of a larger project about game epistemology and the observation of games. On the theoretical side, our intention is to be able to report a game situation in terms of uh, the player behavior and skill. What happens when we play and what can be said about it from uh, the observator point of view. So our goal with this analysis is um, to be able to build a set of individual and collective instruments and indicators to observe a game. From a practical point of view, what we are looking for is to build a toolkit of what we have uh, called the observation bricks of skills and behaviors. The, the idea is to bring together tools that can be used from an educational perspective to use existing games for learning or critical purposes. So this is all. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed our presentation and that you will have a lot of questions to ask us or uh, suggestions uh, to make in order to improve our uh, experimental framework. Thank you very much.